What's up guys, welcome to Valdora Kun. From our previous episode, we have witnessed the arrival of new tribe which are the Elvins. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, I will put the link in the description below. Just a quick warning, these videos contain spoilers from the light novel. By the way, please follow my backup channel with all the lost videos. Also, don't forget to join our Discord community, Voldora Kun Subordinates. The link is in the description box. So now in this video we will review what happened next, which is the story behind Benimaru's visit on the Tengu tribe and an unexpected war. But before we will proceed, please like, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now without further ado, let's proceed with the video. Benimaru and Alvis headed over to the Tengu's hidden homeland and brought a dozen Kurinai members. The journey over went smoothly, up until they were halted by some young warriors of the Tengu tribe in front of a cave on the top of Mount Kasha. He also bore a tail and dog-like triangular ears. Observing their well-trained stances, it became readily apparent that they were proficient in martial arts. Benimaru wasn't oblivious to this fact and speaking with him, Benimaru asked for permission to go through the barrier placed within the cave. The warrior agreed but allowed only Benimaru and Alvis to follow him inside. Through the cave, they were greeted with flowers blossoming in what can only be described as an Arcadia. This was a beautiful village. In the courtyard they were taken to, Benimaru was greeted by a beautiful woman, one who looked human, unlike any of the other Tengu. The beautiful girl came out to welcome Benimaru. Her pure white hair reached her shoulder and her small, cherry-colored lips looked very soft. Her long, Sharp eyes were the eyes of a wolf, watching Benimaru like a beast sizing up its prey. Benimaru thought to himself that her presence could rival demon Lord Carrion, or perhaps even stronger than that. Benimaru said, My name is Benimaru. I am visiting as a representative of demon Lord Ramuru Sama. The girl asked, Welcome, kind messenger. I am the daughter of the Tengu tribe elder. Mamiji is my name. What brings you to us? Do you plan to take over this land? Her words were poison-tipped. Benimaru could tell he wasn't welcome at all. But he was not going to let such a minor thing hold him back. Benimaru responds, we have no such intent. What we seek is permission to venture over the Kasha Mountains along the border with the forest of Jura. If possible, I also hope that you will permit us to dig a tunnel in this mountain. And Mamiji said, hmm. No ambitions of a land grab, then. You may have permission to pass, but what do you mean by digging a tunnel? Mamiji seemed less than enthusiastic about this conversation, but the word tunnel had caught her attention. Even Benimaru was not sure what this tunnel thing is about but accordingly, it is about opening a hole in the mountain. A tunnel would be the shortest route between Tempest and the capital of Sarian. The road will already suffice, and the tunnel wasn't necessary, but he wanted to bring up the concept in his negotiations regardless. Benimaru explained, a tunnel involves digging a hole in the mountain to allow passage through to the other side. We won't press it if it's not convenient for you. Yet Mamiji interrupted, hold on. Opening a hole in the mountain? Are you serious? And Benimaru confirms, indeed. Hat's what the project plan called for. But no tunnel is necessary for the route we have now. I only asked beforehand in case of it becoming a necessity in the future. If you are not willing, we will not force you to do so. The Tengu tribesmen began to sway. To them, the mountain was holy, digging a hole through one, was seen as anathema. Mamiji stood up and said, you are truly awful. We don't care for whether a slime becomes a demon lord or not, as long as you do not interfere with us, I see no harm. We even plan to close one eye for you and that stinking snake you brought. But if you wish to make a mockery of our glorious mountains that I cannot abide, Benimaru didn't mean that at all, but given the circumstances right now, continuing negotiations with them seemed impossible. Benimaru had no intention of making an issue out of this, yet the fire has been fueled as everyone is not willing to remain silent. Alvis broke her silence, you mentioned a snake that stinks, were you perhaps referring to me? A fuming Alvis leaped out of her chair instead, staring Mamiji down. A fight was about to break out as both persons began to emit a dangerous aura. Benimaru tried to halt her when Alvis's sharp gaze was shot at Mamiji. Her extra skill eyes of Heavenly Snake could cause paralysis, poison, insanity, and many other ailments. But none of that phased Mamiji. 
Mamiji commented, such a silly move. I am the daughter of the Tengu tribe elder, status ailment doesn't work on me. Moreover, Mamiji's extra skill sense of heavenly wolf was always activated. It gives her information beyond what her five senses provided, similar to an advanced version of extra skill magic perception. Thus, sneak attacks like that didn't work on her. Mamiji raised her fan, and with smooth dancing motions, launched an attack at Alvis. Alvis blocked the first blow with her golden staff, but the second one hit her on the side and sent her flying to the far end of the open air courtyard. A moment passed before Mamiji broke the silence, are you done? I see the prestigious beast Katir are all bark and no bite. Now that hurt Alvis's dignity. Alvis hissed with hurt pride, don't underestimate me now, country girl. I went easy on you because we were here to negotiate, but it seems there's no such need anymore. She glared coldly at Mamiji. As a high-ranked Majin of the Beast Kingdom Eurasania, she began to demonstrate the proper style to stand off against Mamiji. Mamiji said. Went easy? I was going easy on you. I've put an effort trying not to kill our envoy. Or do you want to make me truly angry? The two stared at each other as the temperature in the surrounding room began to drop noticeably. This could no longer be simply described as a misstep, things have gotten problematic. And in the midst of it, Benimeru sat drinking his tea. Alvis added, you are indeed strong. But if you think little girl is inexperienced as you in battle has a chance, think again. And Mamiji rebutted, wanna try? As you've said, I want to accumulate combat experience too. I think you would make a fine test case. At that instant, with the flash of a sword, the fan in Mamiji's hand was deflected. Benimeru intervened in the duel. He said, enough. I apologize for her offense. With that being said, I will not allow you to kill my companion. Alvis is surprised, Bebenimeru sama Are you implying that I would lose? And Benimeru said, yes. If I didn't stop you, you would have been cut in two. And Alvis defended, nonsense. I did control my attack power. And Benimeru interrupted, no, your control of Yauki is not skillful enough. There was too much strength. And then both Alvis and Mamiji spoke at the same time, ha how could this? And I I lost? Mamiji and Alvis both unconsciously collapsed at the same time at the scene. As they did, the doors on one end of the courtyard opened, revealing a large beautiful canine-eared woman. The young Tengu warriors quickly kneeled. Mamiji said, Ma mother. The elder scolded her loudly while approaching, silly girl. In another few moments, the group had relocated themselves to an inner chamber, one in the classic Japanese style with tatami mats and flat floor cushions for kneeling on. After the incident, the elder gave Mamiji a lesson with her fists, she was still holding her head with tears in her eyes. Benimeru said, it's all right, there's no need to go that far. We've only come here to greet you. Although their goal was not reached, but this was no longer an atmosphere for casual talk. Moreover, Alvis was also dejected, so staying any longer would only make the situation more awkward. But the elder had other ideas. The elder said, haha, don't mind that, young man. That was quite some swordplay you showed off, by the way. Could it be a Boro Ryu, school of haziness? And Benimeru is surprised, how did? Ah, no, I do have some idea. Mamiji Dono's fan dance also had elements of my style. Could it be? And the elder agreed, yes, I've studied haze as well. From my master, Bayakuya Araki. Benimeru was shocked. The Tengu gave him a satisfied smile. The elder said, my name is Kaede, Kaede also means maple. Then, the Tengu elder Kaede began to tell the story of her past. Over 300 years ago, she'd been spending her time in the land of the ogres. She hid her true strength, went on journeys, and happened to encounter Bayakuya and studied sword art under him. But Kaede wasn't alone. She trained alongside someone else, a born talent, living by the sword. He was also Bayakuya's grandson. Bayakuya had often said, how upsetting that I couldn't grant him a name. Apparently, this was Bayakuya's mantra. Naming monsters on a whim may end up costing you your life. As a human, naming this grandchild of his would have surely killed him. At the time, Kaede also didn't have a name, so she didn't understand what his hang-up was about it, but now she had an inkling. If you love someone, after all, 
you want to leave something behind for them. Later, Byakuya's life came to an end and passed away from this world leaving his grandson, who then became the demon swordsman, Kenki. Enough to challenge even Kaede. In terms of technique, she lost out completely. Moreover, Kaede was mesmerized by his dashing swordsmanship. And so she confessed her love to him under a large maple tree. After sharing a night together, she departed from the ogre village. The forest of Jura had been known for its unstable weather, but that maple tree, however, had always stood tall and beautiful. It had become a symbol of the ogre's homeland and Benamaru knew it well. Benamaru said, Hey, hold on, wouldn't that make you Hakurus? And Kaeda asked back, Hakuro, you said? Ah, so the sword ogreite reigned with his gained a name? Oh my, it's quite surprising to learn that he's even still alive. Benamaru was getting more and more nervous seeing Kaeda finishing her words with a smile on her face. He thinks to himself, does Hakuru know about this? His mind was swimming with all kinds of questions. But the greatest shock of all was yet to come. Kaede said, with that being said, I can finally be reassured now. Benamaru is confused as to what she meant. Hakuru Dono has trained a reliable and courageous prodigy, and he will be the husband to my daughter. Benamaru spit out the tea he was drinking to calm his nerves. Benamaru seldom lost his cool, yet this whole trip had been full of surprises ever since they arrived at the village. Alvis next to him became speechless, dropping her teacup, which shattered into a million pieces. Mamiji blushed intensely at the news and looked at Benamaru. And that's it for my video. Thank you so much. See you on my next upload.